Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. It's safe to say that the EU has a thing about fish, a big thing about it. Over the course of our last few Brexit videos, the default answer has always seemingly been about fish. So in this video, we'll settle this matter once and for all, and look at why Europe and the European Union just can't stop talking about fish. If you like our videos and want to see more of them, then please subscribe to the channel. Also, if you really want to lend us a hand, then you can check out our Patreon. Signing up not only supports the channel, but gets you a whole bunch of exclusive perks, like early access to videos, behind the scenes posts, your name at the end of videos, and your likeness in videos. To find out more about all of the perks you could receive, click the link in the description. Fishing in the European Union is regulated by something known as the Common Fisheries Policy, a sister policy to the Common Agricultural Policy. Introduced way back in 1970 and most recently reformed in 2014, in the words of the European Commission, the Common Fisheries Policy, as the name suggests, is a set of rules for managing European fishing fleets and conserving fish stocks. Designed to manage a common resource, it gives all European fishing fleets equal access to the EU's waters and fishing grounds, and allows fishermen to compete fairly. The policy itself covers four key areas. Fisheries management, ensuring that fishing is otherwise sustainable and doesn't negatively impact the long-term viability of fish stocks through a system of quotas. International policy and cooperation, that is to say, ensuring that fishing occurs outside of European waters, fishing that makes up more than 20% of union vessel catches. Market access and trade policy, ensuring fair competition and common standards when it comes to things such as labelling and funding, the money supporting fishing communities, and a general transition towards more sustainable practices. So far so good, right? And when fishing contributes a vanishingly small amount to the EU's economy, there's no way this could be controversial, right? Well, the issue being the flare points that have arisen from the policy, broadly falling into three categories, political, economic, and environmental. From the political front, the policy is widely seen as taking an overly centralised top-down approach, as well as lacking the technical dynamism needed to respond to localised changes in fish populations. At one point, the policy was even dubbed the EU's most unpopular and discredited policy by the Scottish Government. Another major criticism arises from the apparent imbalance in allocations, something that came to a head during the Brexit campaign. According to a 2018 DEFRA white paper on fisheries, on average between 2012 and 2016, other EU member states' vessels landed in the region of 760,000 tonnes of fish a year in UK waters, whereas UK vessels landed approximately 90,000 tonnes of fish a year in other member states' waters. Invariably, this led to calls to take back control of our waters, and raised issues surrounding sovereignty. Ultimately, the question is, who controls whose waters? And who gets to decide who fishes where? Because, let's be honest, fish don't follow frontiers. Joe Owen, Brexit Programme Director at the Institute for Government, highlights just how significant an issue fishing is, especially in the Brexit negotiations. It's a hugely political and symbolic issue. Even if it's nowhere near as economically important as some other industries, communities and constituencies are based around fishing. And from the EU side, the same thing is true. The UK is a vital trading partner. Would they imperil that because of fishing communities in coastal states? Focusing on the economics, the Common Fisheries Policy established a single European market for fishing, with equal access regardless of member states. So, a Spanish fishing vessel is free to fish in French waters, a French vessel in Italian, an Italian in Portuguese, and so on and so forth. On a truly economic front, imposing quotas is necessary. Truly equal and unrestricted access leads to a much, much greater problem, an economic phenomenon known as the tragedy of the commons. Nope, it's nothing to do with the House of Commons, but rather common resources. Specifically, a situation where people or countries acting in their own self-interests end up causing an end that's against the common good of all people involved. So, when it comes to the EU's fish stocks, this is unquestionably a common resource. So, it's in everyone's interest for sustainable fishing to occur, so that fish populations don't get so low as to endanger future fishing. 
If people overfish today, there won't be any fish left for tomorrow. Assuming no formal limits, however, each country and vessel would fish constantly in the knowledge that if they don't pick up a specific fish, another vessel will, putting them out of business. Collectively, however, this results in an unsustainable practice where fish stocks are overfished and depleted. The traditional economic response is to put in place restrictions and regulations using a top-down solution. Although that's not to say that top-down restrictions are the only solution or even whether they're actually the solution in the first place. Top-down central intervention has, in a number of studies, been shown to often undermine existing willingness to cooperate and obey rules. Eleanor Ostrom, Nobel Prize winning economist, one of only two women to ever receive the award, was awarded the prize for developing innovative bottom-up solutions for the issue of the tragedy of the commons, removing the need for regulations and top-down central intervention. So maybe these restrictions aren't as necessary as you might think. Finally, there's the environmental concerns. Until recently, specifically until January 2015, it was commonplace, if not a requirement, to simply discard undersized fish or fish over a vessel's quota. In addition, the New Economics Foundation found that quotas were regularly set well above the level dictated by scientific advice and evidence between the years of 2001 and 2016 going further to again criticise the otherwise opaque nature of quota negotiations. In the December 2019 negotiations round, out of the 120 total allowable catch decisions made or confirmed at the meeting, some 52 were above the amount set by scientific advice and amounting to 79,300 tonnes of excess catch. Quotas are themselves set on an annual basis by the Council of Ministers at the Agriculture and Fisheries Council. In the words of the Institute for Government, these are set on the basis of advice from international and EU bodies. Once the overall EU quotas are agreed, member states are then given a percentage on the basis of relative stability. Each fishing vessel then receives individual quotas with quotas meant to be oriented towards achieving so-called maximum sustainable yields. All of these decisions led to Lord Teverson, Chair of the House of Lords Energy and Environment Subcommittee, in a report on fisheries and Brexit, placing extreme emphasis on the move away from political decisions towards scientific ones, saying, in the past, the common fisheries policy has been based too much on politics rather than on scientific evidence. Nonetheless, in 2014, a government review by the British government concluded that the common fisheries policy failed to achieve its core objectives and that the evidence overwhelmingly pointed towards a failure of maintaining fishing stocks. That's not to say that no progress is being made on this front. In 2015, a discard ban was proposed and implemented before leading to a full and outright ban of discarding fish in January 2018. But again, this is far from issue free. A House of Lords report concluded that the EU ban on discarding cannot be reasonably enforced without causing the fishing industry significant harm. Oceana, an NGO working on fisheries and the health of the seas, reiterated the issues raised by the House of Lords report, stressing that there are no proper control measures or evidence that the landing obligation provisions are properly enforced. So those are the core tenets of the common fisheries policy. The EU's policy is specifically designed to ensure countries get fair access to waters, that fish stocks aren't exploited, and environmental impacts are limited. However, that doesn't mean that some don't take issue with these objectives and their execution. In fact, as we mentioned, this has been a major issue for Brexit negotiators, with the United Kingdom desperate to break free from the EU's policy, potentially so determined that they're willing to tank the whole deal. So what do you think? Is the issue of fish an overinflated obsession, or is the political symbolism and environmental damage simply too important to dismiss? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. If you want to see your name listed at the end of the videos, just like Jeff Bale, Rish App Willem, and the Kosu Keller, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.